All right, the large intestine, its primary role is the absorption of water. It does absorb other things, but really um, it, it's less significant than the fact that it's basically compacting whatever is in there to make a nice little package for you to drop out in a doo-doo. All right, so your large intestine is making your doo-doos. That is why if you um, don't absorb all the water out of what enters the large intestine from the small intestine, then you're going to have diarrhea and all your water is going to go out your doo-doo. And a significant um, complication of diarrhea is dehydration because you can't keep your fluid in you. So let's name um, large intestine parts. First of all, what part of the small intestine is guaranteed to be attached to the large intestine? You know this, doggies. Oops. Eel E for eat. Um, eat them. The ileum is the small intestine part that enters into the large intestine. And you will not wonder if you are in large intestine or small intestine. It's super obvious. You will not be able to tell if you are in ileum or jejunum or duodenum unless you have other markers nearby. For example, if you have a piece of small intestine and it's attached to a piece of large intestine, what is the small intestine part you are in? You're in the ileum. If you have a piece of small intestine that is attached to the stomach, what part of the small intestine are you in? You're in the duodenum. All the stuff in the middle, you can probably make a call um, and you do the best that you can if you don't have clues. The first part of the large intestine is called the cecum. And hanging off the cecum is the appendix. And the appendix is this little worm-like um, pouch that is, um, there's all sorts of questions about what it actually does in humans. Uh, in critters like rabbits, they actually put food in there. They're like, here, let's store this for later, and there's lots of bacteria in there, and so they get some extra digestion done in the appendix. Um, rabbits do, they have all sorts of strategies to get some extra digestion done because uh, it just so happens that um, they eat their poop too round one of their poop. They eat one flavor of their poop, and then they, after it goes through a second time, how do they know they don't eat the second round of poop? <laughs> Rabbits are cool. Okay, so the uh, cecum, we enter first. Then we en um, enter the ascending colon. Super straightforward. Then you get the transverse colon. Then you get the descending colon. And then a little S-shaped piece of colon called the sigmoid S-shaped colon. And then you have a friendly rectum and ends with the anus. Hmm, that's it. You're absorbing water during this time. They're actually, dude, this was kind of cool. There are um, little pouches in the rectum where your feces, like they're like stop gaps so that if you like cough or something or you fart, you don't poop on accident because the these little like weird shaped like curves almost or like indentations in the rectum um, 
allow gas to head out without everything else heading out. Awesome. And, um, oh, and there's a couple of sphincters in the anus. There's an internal sphincter, and that one is not voluntary. Like, if it opens, you can't be like, dude, I changed my mind. It's not a good time. Close. Abort. No. Um, you, when that one opens, it's open. But there's an external sphincter that you can control. So the external sphincter is made of skeletal muscle, and that one you can, like, hold tight and cross your fingers and hope that uh, you can make it to wherever you need to make it. Large intestine. Dude, I think that's it. There, um, yeah, we'll just call it. All right, let's go talk about accessory organs.